So, hello everybody. Welcome to the practical session for the quality control. So it's the hands-on material. You also find this on the Galaxy or in the Galaxy training materials or on the Galaxy training materials site. And as a requirement, I already mentioned this already also in the theoretical session that you just need to know the basics about Galaxy and it will be straightforward. So it, we will just apply a few simple tools to, to some example data to see how um, to perform quality control. And then I also explain a bit more about uh, what kind of quality parameters you have to look for, yeah, which you need to check. And I will sometimes do a break because sometimes it takes some time until we import the data or the data has to be analyzed. And then I do always say then, okay, let's take a break here and make a short stop. And you can either pause the video or you continue uh, watching the video, it depends on you, but you can pause at that point and then do your own or follow me uh, in this hands-on. So you can do the same steps and then pause the video and until uh, when, when it's finished, the import or data analysis, you can continue the video. So I will always mention something like, I will now, there's a break here. Okay, let's come. So you can read, come to the hands-on, so you can read the introduction a bit, but in the meantime, let's go to Galaxy. So log, log, your, um, log in, and then if you logged in, you can create already a new history. So here on the right side, you have this plus button up here, create new history. If you click on it, then you get a new history named unnamed. So, and if you click here, you, you can change the name. And let's name it like my first quality control. And then we switch back to the hands-on material. So we did this, create a new history, we renamed it. And here is the link for our example data. So we just click here on copy. And then we go here to Galaxy on the left side, you will find this download from URL or upload files button up here. So if you click on it, you then click here on this button, paste and fetch data. And then you just paste in, in this box here, the link, and then you click simply on start. We close this here now, let's see, maybe it runs very, very quickly. And then I don't have to do a break. Um, so let's go back. So we uh, import now some data and then we also rename it if uh, okay, let's do a quick break here and then we come, I come back if the data is important. So, papa. so welcome back. If you downloaded the data, you will see it here on the right side in green and we can now rename it. Just, just simply click here on this edit attributes button. And then you go to this section here uh, where you have the name of the data set and it's a bit long. So let's just rename it. And I rename it like reads underscore one. And then we click here on save. And this renames now our data. And then we can already apply Oh no, let's first inspect this data. We talked about, or I talked in the theoretical part that we always deal with when we have raw data with two formats, we either have a faster file or a fast queue file. And here we have a fast queue file. And if you click here on the view data button, and you wait a moment, then you see there are lots and lots of sequences or reads in my data. And the fastq file always has this format that each read has four lines. The first line is my read ID. 
Then sometimes with some comments behind it, here we have the read length actually, but doesn't have to be, it can also be the organism or some other information you, which was uh, commented. And then you have the second line, which is the sequence of the read. The third line is an additional buffer line, always indicated with a plus sign here. Quite often it is empty. Here we have again kind of the same information we had here in the first line. And the last line, the fourth line is the quality string. And as I mentioned, the quality string, each character in here stands for the accuracy of the base call. So it gives you the probability that this base call is correct or not. And this is encoded as, uh, as ASCII and the ASCII sign. So let's go to the hands-on material to get a better idea. So the ASCII is our character, uh, which is then um, of course in our computer, just a number. Um, this ASCII code gives us a number and the number is basically the FRET score. And based on the sequencing device, so this is very, very important. So based on the sequencing device and also the version, so like Illumina 1.3 or Illumina 1.8, we have a different default value where uh, the FRET score is the lowest, the lowest FRET score, so the FRET score of zero starts which um, with, with sign, which, yeah, so here it starts with Illumina 1.8 with the exclamation mark and with Illumina 1.3 with an add sign. And the FRED score, I also explained this in the theoretical section, is basically uh, a number, and this number can be then also translated into the base call accuracy. And so we have three questions here already. And the first question is which ASCII two character corresponds to the first FRED score for Illumina 1.8 plus? I kind of already answered this. Uh, the second question is what is the FRED quality score of the third nucleotide of the first sequence? And the third and last question is what is the accuracy of the third nucleotide? I already answered this, the first question. Let's show it, uh, maybe stop the video now. <laughs> okay, I already showed you the solution, but um, maybe take a moment for yourself to maybe to answer it and stop the video maybe. And um, yeah, so I continue. And so the first question, yeah, so basically in Illumina 1.8, the worst or worst, worst, worst score is zero here at the exclamation mark. So now the second question, this, um, what is the FRED score quality of the third nucleotide of the first sequence? And let's take a look. First sequence, third nucleotide is an I, and we know it's Illumina 1.8, an I. So we, if you look here in the picture, it's maybe hard to see, but the quality or the FRED score for J is 41 and for I is actually 40. So we know now we have FRED quality score 40 and the corresponding nucleotide G has therefore, so what is the accuracy of this third nucleotide has a therefore, if you look here in the table, a base score accuracy of 99.99%. How would I know this if I would calculate it myself? I mentioned this in the theoretical part, there is a conversion. So you just, so the probability of the base call, you take the logarithm and then multiply it by minus 10. So if I know now I have a FRED score of 40, I just divide it by minus 10, which is minus four, and then take 10 to the power of minus four. So which gives me the probability of 0 0.001 and therefore gives me, if I uh, take the difference to one, I get the base call accuracy of 99.99%. Okay, good. If you know, uh, we now go to the actually assignment or to the next step. And now let's type here in this field, search for tools, fast QC. And then we pick this tool here, FastQC, read quality reports. 
And here you have um, you can um, already apply it to your data we imported. So let's just click on execute. And I will um, explain now just briefly what these other other options are. So yeah, actually first you, you see the tool itself has not many parameters which you have to optimize. You can give it a contamination list or a data list if you want to search for contaminants or adapters which are not standard ones uh, in your data. So you can provide this as a tabular file. You can provide also here in Galaxy um, a list um, which specifies which kind of submodules, so which kind of plots FastQC should run and which with which kind of quality thresholds you can provide this here. Then there is another option uh, called disable grouping of bases for reads above 40 base pairs. What this means, I will explain in a moment. And then you can set here to lower the limit on the length of the sequence to be shown in the report. I will also mention what this means. And then you can also here say the length of the camera to look for. Maybe you remember from the practical part, uh, from the theoretical part, that you have this camera content plot where FastQC shows you the uh, overrepresented camers in your data, and here you can set the length. So if you anticipate some longer or shorter gamers, then you can change this here. Okay, um, for the moment, so for me, it's still is running. So let's take a break here and then we come back on when it is finished. Okay, so let's come back if we have run now fast qc then you will see that you have now two files in your history you have one file which is the web page file and one file which is the raw data file we can look into the raw data for the moment and you will see that the raw data is basically the raw data which fast qc uses to generate their plots there's nothing spectacular to it, but technically, if you would want to use the data or if you want to see the data behind their plots, you can look into the raw data file. But this is so far not important. We are now coming to, yeah, we, we are now go step by step through all of, of the plots and the results which you get from FastQC. The first one is the basic statistics. So this is this table here. You see first the file name. So this is what we have, the file which we have analyzed, the file type, doesn't matter so much here, encoding. So with encoding, actually we can check again what kind of sequencing we have done and which, which kind of sequencing device was used. So here again, we see it is Illumina 1.9. And therefore we know also if you ever want to look into the FRED score quality, uh, into this quality string, we know which kind of encoding was used. Then we see, okay, we have up to 100,000 sequences in our data. Zero were actually flagged as poor quality and the sequence length around about, or it's, it's actually, con it's, a, it's a constant number. So every sequence had a length of 37. And we have a GC content of 53. So this is the basic statistic. So this is the basic information you get. And the first thing I would always check is how many reads were analyzed to check really if your coverage was, or if the coverage is here the same as you would anticipate. And also the sequence length. But this, we have also an extra plot for that. Then you see also immediately here on the left side, you see every possible plot which you get from FastQC with a red yeah, sign or symbol. Uh, sorry, red, I said red, but it's actually green. So a green check mark means it's totally uh, fine. So there's no quality breach. 
a red orange uh, exclamation mark here means there's a warning, there is something a bit odd, but it's not a heavy quality breach. And if you would see a quality breach, then there is a red symbol with, with a cross sign or like a, yeah, like a stop sign, so to say. So let's go to the first plot, the bear per base sequence quality. And we already covered this in the theoretical part. Here on the x-axis, you see the position in the read. Here on the y-axis is the thread, so the thread score. And each position has now a box plot. So the distribution of the thread score for, for your read library at that position. The blue line is the mean thread score or the mean quality, so to say. And you see, that's why there is no big quality breach here that the majority is in this green area. So uh, more than have a thread score more than 28. So it's, it's fine here only the end bases, only a few ones have a quality between 20 and 28. And only very, very few. So the whiskers here go a bit into the red zone, but these are some outliers. So very few reads are actually of very poor quality. Now I want to just mention something which, which I skipped. You see the, the read length, um, we said is 37 and you have for every read position here, one box plot. So uh, for, for every position, we have a read distribution or thread score quality distribution, so to say. Um, let's go into this hands-on material. And if you click here on non-uniform x-axis, what happens if your read length get, gets a bit longer, so let's say 100, then FastQC actually starts to bin some of these positions into one box plot. And then you will see only the first 10 positions as one box plot and the other ones are actually binned. And, uh, and you have this kind of scale down below here. Uh, FastQC does it because the size of these plots are uniform. And so I have a uniform size. And therefore, if the read length gets longer and longer, the uh, box plots and these distribution would be, more, would be more suspicious. So at some point, FastQC decides to bin some positions. And therefore, you have, if you go back again onto FastQC, so this two manual, you have this disabled grouping of bases for reads more than 50 base plus. You can, can actually disable this. However, what can happen is that either FastQC throws a warning or the, uh, the plots looks then very ugly. You can also, if, if you have really, really long reads and you want to actually see certain windows of these reads, so specific lengths to compare it, make it also maybe comparable to another experiment where you have done. Let's say you have an experiment with only 50, 50 bases and you have another experiment with 200 bases and you want to compare it to this 50 bases experiment, then you can set here a limit for the lengths for this 200 base pair ex experiment and say, and look only at 50 bases. So this is this option here. Okay, let's go back. And let's go to the hands-on material. Just so I mentioned also in the theoretical part that the quality at the end might drop. So here you can see actually poor quality experiment, but might drop generally at the end because of certain, uh, certain things which can happen uh, or which, which happens naturally for sequencing, which is called signaling decay, phasing, um, which can happen. And this has something to do with sequencing. So the fluorophore force, for example, degrade over time and phasing has something to do which is in, in, in Illumina sequencing called bridge amplification. So you have a spot of a lot of molecules which you sequence at the same time, and they need to be stay in sync to get a constant signal. But at some point um, over a longer period of sequencing time, they lose this synchronicity, and then the signal comes a bit becomes a bit more blurred, and this um, therefore the quality generally reduces at the end for base coding, and this is called phasing. There are other things which can happen. You can read it up. 
And um, here are also some other sequencing errors mentioned if you want to read up and if you want to check what kind of, um, maybe you see something in your data and you're unsure what now the issue is, uh, we mentioned here some uh, potential quality breaches that might have happened. And quite often it comes to maybe some uh, sequencing, uh, heavy sequencing errors. Here's now, here are now two questions. How is the mean score changing along the sequence? Is this tendency seen in our sequences? I take a short moment for you to answer. Maybe you can stop the video again. And then the solution is more or less what I actually already mentioned. The mean sequencing quality here stays above 28. So it's actually uh, good. So this is really good quality. And is this tendency seen in all sequences? Um, more or less, you, you see again, there are, because of the whisker and here because of the uh, second quartile and second quarter, uh, second and first quarter um, that uh, some reads um, are a bit lower than 28, but again, this is just a few reads and it's not that big of an issue. Okay, I make a short break here. And let's come back. So we have this plot here, which I mentioned is specifically for Illumina sequencing. So we have this per tire sequencing quality where you can see the, if there's something heavily problematic with uh, this, or if there was something very uh, problematic with the sequencing uh, device. So there you would see if you would have piloted an air bubble in the flow cell or something. But here it's very good. So blue means good quality. Red, if you would have a very big red stretches, would mean poor quality. You have then the pair sequencing quality scores. Uh, and this is the uh, showing you the, the here on the x-axis, the mean sequencing quality. So the FRED scores, the distribution of it. So on the y-axis, you see the number of reads with this mean sequence quality. And you see a lot of sequences, which you already saw from the per base sequence quality plot that a lot of reads actually have a, a quality higher than 28. And so this is actually quite a good plot, which you would expect. Okay, let me check. So the next one is the per, per base sequence content. You see here now there is a warning sign. And that's why, so here you see on the x-axis the position in the read, on the y-axis the fraction of the reads with this, this nucleotide at that position. And typically, so ideally, you would expect a distribution something like this. So this would not generate warning. But here you, we have one, and because of the beginning, so we see here we have a lot of, um, yeah, some a lot of bumps in, the, in there, and this is perhaps due to a bias which happened. So doesn't mean this is a poor quality. Just means something either we have anticipated or not anticipated. So it's probably a bias from the protocol. Maybe for chipsec, I would assume something like this because of, or for, for, for clipsec, because of the protein binding to certain regions or the extraction enzymes I have used or the fragmentation also is a bit biased. If I'm not expecting something like this, then again, so this then fragmentations may be biased or I have also sometimes adapters in there or some contam uh, contaminations could lead to a different nucleotide composition. We have the per sequence GC content here also shows a warning sign. So the blue line is here the theoretical distribution. The red line is the empirical distribution. And on the x-axis, we see the GC content in percent. And here on the y-axis, the number of reads with this GC content. So it's actually the distribution of the GC content. And it's a bit, it shows here a warning because the distribution is a bit shifted and a bit spiky. 
That's again, maybe an indication that I have here some uh, sequences in there uh, or bias in there uh, in my read library. Then I have the pervase end content. It's perfect. We have no ends in there. Maybe you remember from the theoretical part that an N is basically a base call, which, uh, which where, where we don't have a confidence anymore about what kind of base it is. So if your sequencing device or the algorithm cannot decide anymore based on the signal it gets that this is an A, T, G, or C, then instead of writing an A, T, G, or C, it will write an N in your file. So you, you will see then also in your fast Q file some ends in there. And so this is on the x-axis the position again in the read, and this on the y-axis the fraction of the reads with, um, with this end content. And here it's zero, so this is perfect. And then you have the sequence length distribution. I mentioned all of the uh, reads had a sequence length of 37. So um, if you expect something like this, then perfect. There could be, of course, sequences with different lengths, depends on your protocol. Um, so this doesn't have to be always be constant. And then you have the sequence duplication level. Here, you see how many sequences are duplicated, how fast QC decides about this. It just looks at the sequence itself in your read library and, and looks if it can find the sequence um, a couple of times, so more than once. And on the x-axis, you see the duplication level, so how, how often the sequence is in your read or in your read file and on the y-axis the fraction of the reads with this duplication level. Blue line is your empirical distribution. The red line is the distribution you would have if you would do a deduplication. And here on top also says again in the title the fraction you or the, the number of reads or the fraction of reads you would still keep if you would do a deduplication. So it's here 91%. So pretty good. So a lot of reads are actually unique molecules. Only a few ones are duplicated or tries in there in the data, maybe four times. You have a very, it's barely seeable, but you have here a little bump with some reads are maybe 10 times in there. So this is a pretty good experiment. And I would say this is typically, you can expect from um, something you do uh, DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing, you quite often actually see a lot of duplications in there, in there for, for example, in ChIPSEC or ClipSEC. And then it's really important that you discuss, if you ever see this, then you discuss what to do um, with your bioinformatician or with your PI. Because it's not that you then always apply a deduplication and I come to this in a moment. I will just go over this now to show you the rest of the plots and then we talk about this again. So here you have overrepresented sequences. There are none in there. So, and because you have none in there, um, normally you would have after the adapter content plot, another k content plot showing you k um, the fraction of k in your data. However, if there are none, so you have then also no overrepresented sequences. So the KMA content plot is, is then missing. And here it says then no overrepresented sequences. Else you would have then here a table. And then the last one is the adapter content. It just shows you if you have not provided FASTQC with an adapter contamination list or something, then it just shows you the standard sequencing adapters potentially in your data. And here we can see on the x-axis the position in the read, on the y-axis the fraction of the reads with this adapter at that position. And you can see we have no adapters basically in there, so perfect. So this I would assume that somebody already removed the adapters quite, uh, quite often. This is either done by the sequencing facility already 
or you already have given it to your, your bioinformatician and you already removed the adapters. If not, if you really have raw data, then I would see some adapters in there. So let's go back to the hands-on material. Uh, here we talk again about, um, so we, we covered the pervase sequence nucleotide composition plot. So this is our, this was our plot here, and this is a plot which you would see perhaps for bisulfide sequencing data. So, or for example, IC data also showing you that a very heavy nucleotide composition doesn't, and this will actually throw you a warning, but doesn't mean that this is a big quality breach. Probably this is then something actually intended. So this I would also expect for Clipset data sometimes that I have a nucleotide composition bias. And so even though it shows you a warning, it's actually intended and everything is fine. So again, so here was the question actually, why is there a warning for the per base sequence contents graph? And I, taught, uh, I explained this. So in the beginning, there's kind of a, a bias, biases in there. That's why there is a warning for the per, per, per sequence GC content. We also, so there was also a question, why is there a warning? And I also, talked about this, so it was shifted a bit to the left and a bit more spiky. PCR duplicates. So this is, so this is, was our plot here. And this is actually a plot I would actually would anticipate to see for, for example, for ClipSec. And for ClipSec, I would do a deduplication because for ClipSec, and it is very important to know where my RNA binding proteins bind. So ClipSec is um, a protocol where you analyze um, the where where protein bind to your transcriptome to RNAs. It's, it stands for cross-linking immunoprecipitation, and it's very important to know where this where this um, position is and every duplicated sequence generates a very heavy bias in there for, for, for your counts and therefore disturbs your later analysis. For ChIP-seq, however, or RNA-seq, and this is actually also mentioned, or not mentioned here, <laughs> sorry. Um, I think it's mentioned, um, it's mentioned in this text here somewhere that for RNA-seq or for um, ChIP-seq, I know it's mentioned here, that uh, this can actually be uh, truly represented sequences because you have, if you analyze uh, eukaryotic data, then you have simply very uh, abundant, so you have different isoforms of your transcripts, right? And so this could be just means that you have a very abundant transcript. And because you have a very abundant transcript, you have a lot of sequence coming from the same location. And therefore you have a lot of sequences which are the same. And therefore you have a lot, lot of duplicates in there. So if you ever see this here for RNA-seq or ChIP-seq, then really talk about this with your bioinformatician or your, your PI and ask if you should do the deduplication or not. Because if you do a deduplication, I, I, I would only do a deduplication then if I have enough material. And it uh, depends again on your analysis you want to do. But let's say for differential expression analysis, you want to know which kind of transcripts are um, differentially expressed. Or which, if you do an RNA-seq experiment, uh, which kind of transcripts are differentially expressed between two conditions, then you need uh, up to or at least 10 million reads. And if you have not enough and you do a deduplication, then you will actually influence your downstream analysis quite heavily. So I would only do a deduplication if I have enough reads in my read library. So the per tile sequence is also mentioned here again. So this is what, what I, so this is what, what we kind of had. And this is what you would expect to see if there maybe went some ro something wrong with the sequencing device. So there maybe where because it's also very systematic here. Um, it's not as there are no red lines so far, but I would still ask why I would see such a systematic systematic bias here, and probably then it has something to do with your sequencing device. 
So this is the Pervase end content, this we had, and this is something where I would also again see, this is not a very big issue here, but maybe you remember from the theoretical part, we had a plot which was really, we had a lot of positions with, with a lot of um, ends in there, with high fractions. And then you would really maybe just discard the, the total data set because there was something really going wrong in your, uh, in your sequencing or your experiment. Sequence length distribution, we talked adapter content. Just to mention this was our plot and this is a plot I would see if I still have adapters in there. So you see, okay, here I have universal uh, Illumina adapters still in my data. And so if you are, I would see something like this, then you have to do an adapter trimming. And we come to this point later on. Kmo content, again, I mentioned we, we, had, we don't have this in our report so far because there are no overrepresented sequences. But then if you have this plot, you would, and there is a breach kind of, you would see something like this here. And this could be that this is linked to my adapters. So because if I have adapters in there, then I also have overrepresented sequences. And this is a, also shown my KMA content. Or oh, this is actually if I don't have adapters in there and still see, see this and I don't anticipate this, then I have some contamination or some systematic bias due to my fragmentation or anything. So I would need to check it. Okay, with that, we come to an end to the fast to see part. I just want to mention there are many, many more scenarios, many more things which can happen, of course, to the quality of your data. And if you see this, then, and you don't know what this might be, then you can follow this link here or click on here. And we, the, there you will find more descriptions about what kind of quality breaches might happen, which will look like this and that. So you get some more information about um, what might ha have happened to your data. Okay, we do a small break here. So let's come back. We were left off by discussing the results of FASTQC. And we saw that the only slightly issue with our data was that the end of the basis were a bit low quality. And so what we are going to do now is we do something called an end trimming. And do we know? So uh, let's come back. We were left off with the discussion of the quality control. And we saw, so the, there were one, uh, two warnings, but they were not that big of a quality breach. And the only issue maybe there was, was the end of the basis or the end of the reads, the end basis were a bit less quality than the rest of the read or the reads. And we are now going to do something about this by doing um, an end base, end base so a trimming. This is called a trimming, a quality trimming. And for that, we will use now um, a tool called Cutadapt. So let's go to Galaxy and search here for the tool Cutadapt. And if you click on it, then you have the first option here saying, is your data single end or paired end data? And we have only one file, so it's definitely single end. And then we select our file, our first Q file. If you don't see, or if you cannot select anything here, then probably your first Q file or your faster file is not correctly formatted in Galaxy meaning that your format 
states here either a question mark or something totally different to fast few sangs, fast few c sangar or faster. So you have to change this. Then the next options you have you have here, you can provide cut adapt with adapter sequences. So on the three, three prime, five prime, or on both ends. Uh, if you would click on it, you could provide either a custom, you can provide a custom sequence from yourself or from the from the history. But we saw already in the FastQC plots that we had no adapters in our data. So let's remove this again. And you can also here say cut bases from it before adapter trimming. So this you can also do if you know that there are maybe some um, molecular identifiers in your read data, then you cut, cut this off before you do an adapter scanning. There are further options here, but I will not explain them into much detail. If you want to know about this, then read, take, take your time and read through it. What we want to do is now go to filter options and set here as a minimum length 20. So we say now to cut adapt, please filter out any read which is smaller than 20 bases. This you quite often do, because if you do a mapping, then small reads map very easily to your genome and transcriptome, but quite often they are not uniquely mappable. Uh, because, of course, the, the, the shorter the sequence, the higher the chance it maps twice or more than once in your, to your genome or transcriptome. And therefore, quite often, you discard very short reads. This cutoff is a bit, um, there exist some studies, but is a bit uh, empirical. Um, you see in a lot of papers different values for that. Here in this example, we do a cutoff with 20. And then go to read modification options where you have here this option saying quality cutoff. And here we also say 20. So we cut off every base which is lower than 20 or has a lower thread score than 20. And last but not or last option, under the output options, we want a report. So say here yes. And then we execute. Okay. Then we wait and we come back when cut adapt is finished. Okay, if cut, up, cut adapt is now finished, then we have now two files here. The first one, if we click on it, and then we simply get another fast queue file. So cut adapt simply has done something. And if you would now uh, check the size of both files, so of our initial file and the cut adapt file, you see there are some, definitely something happened because it was reduced in size. And if you now click here on this report, then we get in some information about what happened. And for that, we have now two questions. How many reads have been found with adapters? How many base pairs have been removed from the reads because of bad quality? And how many sequences or sequence pairs have been removed because they were too short? And I give you a short time to answer this. Maybe you can also stop the video if you want to think about it yourself. If not, then here are the solutions. So how many reads have been found with adapters? So they were actually zero, none, as you can see here. Uh, and we already confirmed this, right? With FASTQC, there were no adapters in my data. And we are actually also no provided any adapter sequences. How many base pairs have been removed from the reads because of bad quality? So here you can see 
uh, the solution, but in the file itself, we, we see here, so 1.2%, so around about 44,000 bases were removed, which is yeah, the minority, the majority, 98.7% we retained. So it's still in, in our data, which is pretty good. And last question, how many sequence pairs have been removed because they were short, too short? Too short meaning they are smaller than 20 bases. And as we can see here, the so reads that were too short, um, we had 322, so 0.3%, and the rest were actually long enough to be able to, uh, to pass the filter, which is pretty good. And now what we can do is we can rerun um, our uh, fast QC on our, yeah, basically on our new data. So let's go back to FastQC and let's run this on this, not on the report, but on the fast, so on this read one output of Cutadep, just click simply on execute. And to that, um, we, let's, let's wait until it's finished. And I just want to mention, so bad quality uh, sequences. So if you see this, it's always good to apply cut adapt. However, don't simply do it immediately. Also, maybe ask yourself, why is there a bad quality? And check again if maybe something might have happened with your experimental setup, with your library preparation, your sequencing before you do a quality trim. You just want to check first what might have happened. And another mention here is that if you want to read about, so here is an explanation how Cutadept is doing the quality trimming. So it just, it, it doesn't simply remove every base which is lower than our quality threshold. No, there's actually a bit more sophisticated method behind it to take into account something like a false discovery rate. And this is maybe worth for you to read up to, to see that Cutadept has a bit more sophisticated method that just simply get rid of the spaces uh, if they're below this threshold. Let's check if FastQC is already finished. No, it's still running. Um, in the meantime, if this still is running, we will actually need a second data set because I, I said basically, or I lied when I said that we are dealing with single end data here. Actually, we are dealing with paired end data and we just analyzed the first maze or the forward, forward read and we are missing the reverse one. For that, we want to do now again a quality control and therefore we can already copy the data into our or import the data in our history. So go here again on download from URL or upload files, click here on paste fetch data, paste the link and then simply say start. And in the meantime, so I simply do a break here and we come back if that is finished. So now it should be finished and we can check or oh, let's uh, I have to think because we have to run fast QC. Yeah, let's, let's do this first. So let's rename our new file, the subset two, and click here on this pencil icon and rename it like you want. I name it now as reads two. So this is my reversed. These are my, my reversed reads. So my second mate, and we save that. And now we want to also check the quality for this fast queue or this read library. 
and therefore we select again, search for fastqc, fastqc, and apply it to reads underscore to execute. Now let's look at the quality of our data, which we have uh, modified with cut depth, our process with cut depth. And as you see, um, just as a comparison, so this is now our new quality. Just in comparison, let's go back to the raw data. So this, you can see the, the, uh, the basis here at the end had a bit of lower quality. And now if you go to the modif or the, the processed file, you see it has way better quality than before. And you probably would also see this here in this average quality per read. So the, the quality distribution, mean quality distribution. So this is the new one and the old distribution looked a bit more, okay, it's barely seeable, but I can tell you, um, you have now more reads in uh, above 20 feet. And this, this is the main, or the main things that happened. Of course, now you have your kind of a warning. And this is what I also mentioned that if you um, apply cut adapt, then of course you get read, uh, reads with different lengths. And so the lengths is here between, you see it also already in the basic statistic, between 20 and 37. And if you go to the sequence length distribution, you see now most of the reads are have a length of 37 and a few ones are a bit shorter. So these are the reads where we quality trim them. And this is also what I would expect if I would have raw data actually that has different read length, then I would also expect a distribution like this here. Um, so most of the reads should have a certain length, but then only a few ones um, vary from this value. Okay, you can pause the video now, but I see already that my fast QC for the second read file went through. Let me check first what um, the question to you, how many sequences have, as well, this is the, with the fast QC, how many sequences have been removed? Has sequences quality been improved? And actually, we saw this already from in, in the cut adapt file. So we had 100,000 sequences, and we were left with 99,678 now. And has the quality been improved, been improved? So I mentioned this. We saw quite well that some of the bases at the end um, have now a better quality than before. Okay. Now. Let's go here and look at the report of the second read file. Because we have paired in sequencing, second read file should also have the same number of reads as my first read file. So here we see 100,000 sequences. If this should not be the case, then something definitely went wrong with the sequencing. sequencing. Um, flag SP quality are zero, sequence length is also 37, and the GC content is also 53. And the first thing we observe here is we have a warning per base sequence quality that this time the quality is actually way worse than in our second read file. So a lot of, so base is really good here down here into a FRET quality score below 20. We see the per sequence quality is good. There are maybe here a few bars, but it's not big of an issue. This is also not big of an issue. Most of the reads are actually a bit above 20, a quality of 20. We are now see here, this is the sign in FASQC for a quality breach. So this is kind of showing you, ah, oh, well, here's something definitely off. And probably because here the bias in the beginning is way higher. And here also in the middle, we have some nuclear biases. Um, this we kind of saw already in this first sequence file. Pervase end content is good, no quality breach, sequence length constant, also very good, duplication level also good, no represented sequences and no adapters also in my second read. So with that, 
Um, we go um, immediately before I come back to this step and apply cut adapt. Um, so let's search for cut adapt because we saw there is a quality breach with, with my second read file. And now it is very important. I told you we have actually paired and sequencing data. So we have to select here now instead of single end, paired end. And now we have to select for our first file or first read, also our first made file, and for our second fastq file, the second file, so the latest one. And then we set the same options as before. So this we can minimize here. So filter options, minimum length 20, read modification, quality cut off 20. And uh, output options, yes, we want a report. And then we execute. Question is now, why do I have to, I mean, let's ask a very naive question. Why do I have to choose paired and sequencing? Why not just simply apply cut adapt only to my second mate, to, to my reverse sequences? And the simple answer for this is, if some of your reads are filtered out in your second read file, so let's say you apply it only to the second read file, and you later on do a mapping step or some subsequent analysis step with your files, then you will get an error or complaint from the tools saying something like your read files have not the correct format or your read IDs are incorrect. Because, of course, if you have pattern sequencing data, the first and second made read files should be in sync. So they should have the same number of reads. And if you just apply it to one of the mates, then you filter out some of the reads which are still in your, in your other file. And therefore you have to say to CutAdapt, okay, we have pattern sequencing data. And if you filter out something from your, from, from one of the, if you filter out a mate, then also filter out the other mate. And this, therefore you have to apply it as paired. So this is this run through. Now, before we look at the results of cut adapt, now let's apply something called multi-QC. Multi-QC is a very handy tool which can combine one or two of your FastQ reports into one big report. So it makes a summary out of it. And this is very ha handy if you have a lot of files and a lot of quality reports and you then want to see all of them in one big plot and not have these individual plots, then multi-QC is the tool you have to use. So search for multi-QC, click on it. And then here, which tool was used to generate blocks. So we select here or we search for it basically, fast QC. Yes, raw data and then we apply it to the first of so the, the FASTQ reports where we have done the raw data quality control check. And for that, we take, so this file, so 10 and nine. So for me, it's, so we have to select now the raw data, not the, the, the reports itself. We need the raw data. So for me, it's here, the number 10. And then I press control or I hold control and then for me, it's the, the second file is here, uh, file number three. So I click on it so that both files are now selected. And then I simply say, execute. Okay. And the same thing we are now doing also, or do we have to do it? Let me think about it. No, first we would have need to apply first QC, but let's, okay, come, we, we will come to this back later. Um, let's check out the results of cut adapt. And uh, so here are already the questions. How many bases have been removed from the reads because of bad quality? How many sequence pairs have been removed because they were too short? And I leave this up to you to figure out on yourself so you can stop the video. 
And if not, so let's go and, and see where we can find this information. So we got from Cutadep now, of course, three files. So one file for my um, processed first mate, one file for my processed second mate, and then the report file. So let's look into the report file. The first question was, how many bases have been removed from the reads because of bad quality? And total, so we see here total process bases and quality trimmed, we see, okay, my first read for, for my first mate, we have 44,164, as we already saw in the other cut adapt report. And the second mate, we have a bit more bases removed. So one hundred, around about 140. Thousand. And the second question, how many sequences have been removed because they were too short? And this we see here, pairs that were too short and removed, so one about 1.4%. So the minority, the majority, 98.6% stayed in my read library, which is pretty good. So this is the answer to these two questions here. And so MultiQC is still running. So let's apply fast in the meantime, fast QC to the processed data of my second mate. So for that, we, yeah, search for, uh, yeah, we search for fast QC. And then apply it. So here it's for my file 12. So cut adapt on data eight, read to output, and simply click on execute. Okay. Um, and it seems like it takes a bit of time now here. So I do do a last break and then I come. Okay, so let's come back. So I hope this is the last break. And what I want to do with you now, so for the last step, I want to do apply MultiQC now also for the processed, also the, the, the quality controls for the processed files. So again, search for MultiQC, type in your fast QC. And then for the processed files, so the quality controls are maybe already worth to actually rename now, now your data. And for, for, for me, it's here uh, data number 17, or the fast, so the raw data of 17 here. And this one, yeah, fast QC. Uh, no, wait, sorry, see, I already made a mistake. So it would be better at that point to rename your files, of course. And so we run, run here. So you can see we have here the raw data. We have done the quality control for the raw data. We run cut adapt and then done the quality control for the process data. So I want actually here seven. So hold again, control and click here on seven. Or if you ever named it already, then, or if, so if you're better than me, then uh, click on this file for, and then simply execute. Now let's take a look at the MultiQC report. And you simply click here on the uh, HTML report. And the MultiQC, you will see, or you get the same information basically as in FastQC, but a bit visually a bit different. So here you have the basic statistics and you can see already here's also listed um, how many percent of reads are duplicated, what's the GC content, how many reads are there. And seems like we have to wait until it's loading. Um, I hope it's doing it quickly or not. Um, please hold the line. Let's see new data. Maybe I just had to click. Oh, yeah. I just had to click on it again. And here you see the um, yeah again a plot about unique reads and duplicated reads. Here you have 
Now in here, the pervase quality plot, and this time for both files, as you can see. And then you have the per sequence quality, so the uh, per sequence quality distribution, per base sequence content, so the nucleotide distribution is shown like this here, but you can also click on it to get the plot which you know, which we also have in FASTQC report. Here you have the GC content, per base and content, sequence length distribution, duplication level, overrepresented sequences, adapter se uh, content. And then last but not least is status check. So this is a plot, uh, maybe you remember, and first you see you saw here on the, on the left side, the names of the individual plots, and then a sign if there's a, if it's a good, uh, if it's checked, so it's, uh, it's a satisfying plot, if, it, if there is a warning or it's a quality breach. And this is kind of the summary, uh, the summary here. So for each on the, of the individual files you have to provide it. And you can see, as we know, for my second file, there was a quality breach for the pervase sequence content. Okay, let's look into the FASTQC report of the processed second mate. So click here on web page for the, uh, for the fast, latest FASTQC report. Hopefully it loads. Yes, okay, great. And we can see here the quality uh, improved. So there is no quality breach anymore. So the, uh, the end basis here, even though there's one position which goes a bit still into um, uh, FRED score quality below 20, the rest is I uh, have now improved in their quality. So as a comparison, um, let's go to the unprocessed uh, plot. So this was the previous plot. You see in the per base and quality definitely improved, improved. And now our multi-QC plot is also, also finished for the processed files. And yeah, so you also see then this improvement in here. So let's go to the multi-QC report of the raw data. Yeah, and you see for the second read or mate, it was way lower than now in the in the processed file. Okay, with that, we come more or less to an end. We reached the end of this uh, hands-on of this session about quality control. There are two questions left and I leave this up to you to answer. I hope now you know how to operate or do a quality control with FASTQC, how to do a trimming with CutAdapt, and also how to combine several FASTQC reports into one with MultiQC. If you thought that this material needed a bit more improvement, then let us know. And also rate this tutorial if you found it very helpful then um, leave a comment and with that i hope you will enjoy the rest of the sessions and i say to you have a nice day and a good week bye bye